There you are. Hi. Missed you for a minute. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Archetype. My name is Josh Herman. Uh, today we're going to be sculpting and working on a character. Actually, that's not true. We did that last stream. We're going to be continuing our character. We're going to be building out our set in Unreal Engine 5 today. Uh, in case this is your first time ever watching the stream, welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm working on a series of 12 characters throughout the year. This is my third. Uh, and we're doing a lot of work in ZBrush, Photoshop, uh, Unreal, Quixel, all different types of things. We'll be bouncing around between all different types of software and kind of making a character today. Uh, I'm going to show you what I got up to last stream and then also where we are now. I, I did a lot of work off stream, so I'm going to play a little bit of a, a recap video for you uh, here in a minute. And then we're going to jump into Unreal and we're going to spend the bulk of the stream today, which will be about two hours. We're going to spend the bulk of the stream um, making a library or making the set for where this character will be. So uh, I'm going to jump into ZBrush in a minute and I'm actually going to show you where we're at. I'm also going to jump into Unreal so we can show you what we'll be doing in there and some of the things I've been playing with. But before we do that, I'm going to show you the recap video. Uh, so I'm going to play that. It's about eight minutes long and that'll catch you up to speed on what I did off stream and what I did last stream. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here we are catching off of last stream where I adjusted the sculpt to be much more of a bird and avian influences. I'm exporting that into Maya here to set up the scale, and then I'm going to import that into Unreal Engine 5. Here that is. I'm adjusting it. It looks like some of the orientations are a little bit off, but that's okay. I'm probably not going to care about that too, too much. I'm just adjusting the character here now that it's kind of in somewhat proper proportions, or at least something that resembles what it's going to be. And this is going to help me figure out the scale of all my objects. It's going to help me figure out the, the proportions of everything. And just generally, I find that having um, everything at least in from a proxy manner is going to help me a lot. And that's also what I'm doing right here, where I'm, I'm importing all these really large blocks. I like the idea of some sort of almost like a ziggurat that would be in the background, and they would have many of these things that would be around. And now you see me kind of playing around with the, the cameras, the cinematography, and just kind of generally exploring. Uh, this is my previous project to show you uh, the caregiver. You can check that out on YouTube on, in the archetype playlist. Uh, but here I'm just going to populate a couple of these things around. Uh, I was having some issues. I was actually attempting to copy and paste some of those big uh, mega scan assets in. But I wasn't able to end up doing that because I had a different file translations and where my paths were going. But anyways, it doesn't really matter. Now I've got all this stuff in. And as I'm noticing, I wanted the character to be larger than human. So you see the kind of proxy over there, which is about twice the scale of a human. But then I realized that all my props would be very small. And that was going to bring issues as far as the table and a bunch of other things. So just kind of generally, get once I get this in, I get to experience what it's going to look like. Uh, here, I brought in a cinema camera. This is going to allow me to have better lenses, better framing, uh, and I'm just kind of generally looking at how things are looking. One of the things I didn't like when I started doing this was that that front wall was really, really impacting what I could see and the different camera angles that I could have. And so I played around with removing that and then just kind of changing up the whole set here. And even though it's moving really fast, you can kind of tell what I'm doing. And I saw, thought maybe if it wasn't a top, it would be, could be a pergola. So you saw me adjusting that there. Uh, this stream we're going to be playing a lot with the world. We're going to be building a little bit of the world, probably building a bit of a city, and just exploring that. So we're going to spend a lot of time today in Unreal. Uh, so this part of the is of the video here is actually catching you up quite a bit on the sculpting. So I, after what I did last stream, I spent a lot of time on the character themselves, just to kind of get them up to speed. Um, when I work on a, an illustration or a scene kind of like this, what I like to do, my general workflow is to work on everything as a whole. That's always kind of been my process. I've always kind of liked to jump around and have sections, uh, whatever was the weakest part of the character I like to focus on. And that always works well for character designs and stuff like that. But I'm learning now that in this process where I'm going into Unreal and I'm wanting to build a little bit more of uh, a world that I need to incorporate that part into my process as well. So I need to actually uh, jump into Unreal and kind of level everything up all at once. And that helps me know what's going to be in the scene and what's not going to be in the scene. Now here what you're seeing is me adjusting this into being having a much more uh, avian influence. And specifically, um, as I was doing some research and exploring the character, uh, they were kind of looking like a, what I thought was a crane. And then so I started doing some research on birds. And it wasn't a crane. It was actually a heron, uh, a heron or an egret. And those are actually really great and really beautiful looking birds. And as I did a little bit more research, uh, the Egyptian god of, I believe the characters or the god's name is Benu, um, was 
one of the original cr creators of uh, the world in Egyptian mythology. And I thought that was a really interesting take. And as I did a little bit more research on that, uh, I found that they were also the originator or potentially one of the originators of the Greek Phoenix, uh, a character of, that could be reborn over and over and over. Um, and I thought that was really interesting into being the sage and how that they could maybe be somebody who's lived forever and has been researching stuff forever. Uh, here what you see me doing is kind of finalizing my poses. I realized that those legs were not working at all. Uh, so as you see me trying to shove them under these really large table, it looks really awkward. And so I decided, you know what would be more interesting, um, especially if there was going to be other human characters potentially in this world, was rather than having a really high table uh, like I had before where they would be sitting at a chair, maybe they'd be sitting cross-legged and the table could be more like a smaller uh, table that you might see kind of out of, out of Japanese influence or something like that. And so I kind of played with that. And I think that's actually much more successful. Uh, here you see me playing around with the idea of these really long wings. Uh, phoenixes also have really long tails. So that's something I'm playing around with here about uh, maybe this character's wings and tail are kind of lying and resting on the ground and that this is a part of their body that lasts and just kind of hangs out for a long time and so this kind of created this almost looming but relaxed but almost like a sort of stillness and sadness to the character which i quite liked and so you're going to see me play around quite a bit with the silhouette here um and i'm actually pretty happy with how this is going it does mean that i'm going to have to play around with feathers i'm going to have to end up making wings or things that are going to resemble wings from a distance uh, but i liked getting some of these patterns in here uh, which is something i'm actually going to bring back here you're going to see me and after this i play around with putting kind of a large blanket on the character and that's going to be uh something i'm not sure i really like but here you see me just continuing to play with the proportions continuing to push things back and forth uh, exploring the character as a whole jumping around to the parts that feel the weakest uh, but this is a significant departure from what i was initially thinking but i'm actually pretty happy with this i think this could be pretty cool so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to start exploring color. Uh, color is another one of those things that, that can be very, very important. And it's a it's super important for a, a graphical read, but especially as I'm going to start playing around with what the rest of the character could look like in the environment, I'm going to want to at least know what the colors could be. So using the heron, the blue heron references, and also some phoenix references, that's kind of what I'm calling in right here with these reds and these blues, and just kind of dialing in and really exploring what the character could be. So I'm dialing in some reds and some oranges and some whites and some blues and seeing what could work using heron reference and uh, color patterns and all that kind of stuff to explore what this could be. Something I thought was interesting with the Phoenix idea was that the character could have would eventually grow old and then potentially die and then be renewed and reborn. So bringing in that white I thought was a nice way to potentially show some aging. And then also trying to bring in the blue and the purple. Uh, not trying to get to a purple to a purple color, excuse me. I, I want red and then blue, but I like how this is sort of uh, it's a nice way to bring in w cool and warm tones. Here you're going to see me also try a couple different eye options. Uh, herons and cranes and egrets have all different types of eye and beak and beautiful, really beautiful, stunning, bright, vibrant colors. And I kind of get to a place where I'm pretty happy with it right here. And after this, we're actually going to stop working on the character for a while. And the rest of the stream, we're going to work in Unreal, building the city and the environment for where this character would be. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so as you saw, I basically did a pretty hefty departure on what the character was looking like. I'm going to open up ZBrush real quick so you can get a chance to see what that is. So this is the actual sculpt, as you just saw. Uh, it is many, many different pieces right now, um, meaning that there's several different subtools. For example, just the body, just some of these uh, little plumes, just the hands, just these little shoulders, just this kind of shawl that's sitting on the character. And uh, yeah, somebody's saying that you think the volume is a bit low. Is the volume a bit low for my mic or is the volume a bit low for the, for the sound? Go ahead and make sure I get that ready before we uh, continue. Let me know if there's any issues with the sound. As always, if there's issues with sound or anything like that, uh, let me know so I can try to fix them. It's seeming okay on my end, but both you think. Uh, I can just bump it here. Maybe that'll be a little bit better for y'all. Just push it in the software so it's a little louder. 
Also do a tech chest on tech check on my side as well. Make sure we're good. Uh, but as I set that up and make sure whether it's looking good, sounding good, um, it sounds okay. A little quiet though. I see what you're hearing. I'll pump it just a little bit more. All right, so now we have this character here. And again, we're not going to work on this character too much, but you can kind of see where it's at uh, without any details on it, or sorry, without any paint on it. Uh, it's still relatively rough, but I'm you can see where I'm exploring uh, forms and shapes and rhythms and stuff like that within the character. So we're going to continue with this later. Um, but overall, I'm happy with this. And I have got this into Unreal, so I'll show you that real fast. This is the Unreal scene that I was playing with. Uh, so these are the ziggurats I was showing you. I'm going to move these because they don't they don't need to be here, or at least not so big. I'll put them, I'll make them small and over my head. There we go. Uh, and this is kind of like a large thing. I did try this sort of pergola style, which actually is kind of nice. Create, it'll definitely create some nice shadows here. I'm having a weird display issue with these normals, but the, at least this character in its new sculpt uh, is in as a proxy. So I'm going to use this uh, to, as today as we kind of block out the scene. Uh, but again, the goal of today's stream is to block out the set and to block out the environment. So most of what you see right now is going to be deleted or go away because this is all just kind of temporary stuff. Um, but it is kind of fun to play around in here. Uh, references. I'm going to show you my references. So right now, this is the some of the library stuff that I've taken. Uh, some of this is from other shows and media that we've kind of talked about. Uh, this was my initial inspiration for the the character, um, which was from the Fifth Element, which was sort of this warm tones, kind of more ancient Egyptian, uh, where they wouldn't have light sources in here, so they would have to have a lot of uh, metallic and you know, reflective surfaces to get things inside. Uh, there's a couple other areas that I found like that. So this is the Citadel from Game of Thrones. So the Citadel is obviously a huge uh, library, but they do a similar thing where there's not really uh, light sources. And so they have these big reflective and magnifying things that would bounce light down into different areas, which I thought was interesting. I don't think I'm going to play with that idea too much, but I just like the overall um, shapes in here. Um, this is the outside view, obviously, and this is uh, the inside, the more details where there's a bunch of scrolls and books and all this kind of uh, set up. And what I like about the library aesthetic is that it's kind of like a an organized chaos, meaning like it's nicely structured and you can see how it works in most of these. But um, this is uh, the one from Avatar The Last Airbender, which was uh, I was referencing. What I'm was, As I was looking at all these, they have really tall ceilings. Most of them have very tall ceilings. Uh, especially these two. Um, this was one I found, I think, I don't know exactly what this one was, but it was kind of interesting. Again, the, the tall dome and a couple of these elements in here are pretty cool. Um, this one down here I thought was interesting. I don't know if anybody knows what this is from, but this is from Beauty and the Beast, uh, a really beautiful library scene. Something I liked the most about this was the ceiling. Um, one thing I'm trying to figure out right now is is if we jump into Unreal, you're going to see this is mostly an outdoor scene. Uh, that was not the in original intention. I just thought it was looking a little bit better. Uh, the original intention was more that there would be a wall that the character would be working against or something that they would be working against. Where's that manipulator? There you are. So they might be working in, against something, but I was struggling to get good framing uh, for fronts of the character and, and it was just feeling very claustrophobic in not a good way. It wasn't what I was really wanting. So um, that's why I've kind of pulled back from that and made it more of an open air thing, which I like, but that's also very similar to um, the last character that I did. So I'm, I'm kind of conflicted on if I want it to be outdoor or indoor. And that was when I was looking at the, the Beauty and the Beast references. This is a mega scan table, by the way, with some mega scan books. So you've got some nice little assets here that I've just kind of scaled around. That they could be reading. Um, so I think I want it to be indoors. 
right? Uh, I want it to be indoors, but I still want to have the idea of doing a 24 hour cycle. That was one of the initial things that I, I was wanting to do. And uh, I was actually looking for just pre-stream uh, some screenshots. Uh, I'll try to find them again because I think that they will be very helpful for the stream. Uh, from Prince of Egypt, actually, which was a, a beautiful, absolutely beautiful movie. But there's way too many pages to go through right now, so I don't think I'll be able to find them that quickly. Um, but yeah, here's a couple I found this on. Animation screen caps, if it loads. Something like this one. For some reason, it's... There we go. But just kind of see these beautiful columns with overhead outdoor shots. I think this was a, a, something that I thought was interesting. Uh, do I use Pure Ref or PRef uh, for reference sheets? I often will just use Photoshop or I'll use another program called Quadro, um, which is always pretty cool. There's another sequence in this that I was looking for. So, but I'll pull it on my reference sheet some other time. Uh, the other piece of reference that I was looking at was there was one down here, which was just kind of a pergola, how it's made, how it's built, and the different types of shadows that it casts. Uh, Gandalf, obviously, just for the kind of the clutter that he is, you know, when he's researching, um, how this all looks, the, the clutter, but organized chaos kind of thing, where it stacks of paper, but um, still kind of messy in its own way, bottles, all this kind of stuff. I, this is kind of the initial inspirational bits that I had was these two. But then in doing my research on the heron and the egret and the Egyptian gods and the phoenix, uh, I started to look more into the Alexandrian library, which is an ancient library that was uh, burned down in like 250 AD, I think is what they think. And they don't actually know what was inside of it, but this is, you know, depictions of what people think it could have looked like and as it was getting burned down. And I thought this was kind of an interesting idea. This is actually the more modern or is the modern version of it down here. Uh, which is really beautiful with these really tall columns, this kind of angled um, roof that creates this really beautiful light. And so there's something I think in here that I want to play around with today to create a set that can be indoor, but have outdoor elements to it as well. Um, so that when we do our 24 hour time lapse, which I'll show you in a second, uh, it will look good. So I'm going to show you something that I brought in. Uh, I imported the dynamic uh, what is it called? Dynamic Sky. And this is a plugin that you can get for a couple, like 20 or 30 bucks on the marketplace. And it isn't supported for Unreal 5. And so I was wor wondering if it was going to work. But I went ahead and I imported it. And uh, I'll separate this so we have it as a separate item so I can select it. You don't need to see that one, so I'm going to hide it actually. Uh, but I'm going to select the weather. And what the weather does is it gives you some really cool options. So you're going to see them right under here just the weather presets. I'm going to spin around so we can see some of the things in the distance. Uh, it also does sound, but I can select clear skies, so that would mean that there's relatively no clouds, no skies. I can do partially cloudy, where it'll bring in these clouds, and these are our volumetric clouds, so you can actually see, if we wait a couple minutes, I'll put my cursor on like a point of a cloud right in the middle of this hole, that it will move, that the clouds actually move over time, which is pretty awesome. Um, you can also choose overcast, so you get all these kind of cloudy looks. You can choose, uh, I already chose overcast, foggy, which is even foggier. Uh, you can choose light rain, and what's cool about this is you can see right now it's actually affecting, I'm going to select something that's not this. Uh, it's actually, not on this part, but I think it's down here. It was doing drops. Yeah, you can see it's creating water droplets for me automatically. So I can experiment with some weather types here, with some rain. Uh, select that again, sorry, weather. Uh, then there's heavy rain. You can see it's also noticing that I'm underneath something or not underneath something. It kind of needs a background to actually be able to see what's going on there. But we can get some nice rain effects with this. So you can see how much it's actually raining versus light rain. Uh, you can choose a thunderstorm, which is pretty cool. It's a little foggy to see the thunder. But I think if I come in here and select it again, I can move the cloud coverage a little less. 
can dial all this stuff in. I think if I hit play, it'll play. So I can run around on this space. You can't hear it, but I can hear the rain in the background. Go back to the weather, and then we can also choose snow types as well. So there's a light snow. I don't think it's playing. Ooh. So you can see that the snow is actually landing on the surface of this, which is awesome. Uh, not only that, you can do like blizzard. I think if I hit play. Yeah. So there's wind effects here. And this is all of the, uh, I actually hear it. I don't think you can hear it, but I hear <laughs> the, the unreal sound of it. Um, and then you can do a full on uh, blizzard. I think I just did snow and then there's blizzard. Uh, there is also ways to set this up so that it will actually create a thickness of snow. Uh, and this is all within that plugin. Um, so I'm going to use this a little bit today uh, to kind of start exploring. But this is one thing, that, and this comes with two elements when you when you play with this or you get this plugin. So you get the uh, weather, which is here. I'm going to go back to just clear skies, or actually I'll do partially cloudy so we have these uh, clouds and then I'm going to select the sky now the sky has tons and tons and tons of settings you can roll these out you can adjust the moon you can adjust everything in here and I'll show you what these all do here in a second and why this is why I'm using it instead of the out of the box uh, sky system that's in Unreal 5 um, but what you can do with this is we'll pull all these down so we're not going to play with every one of these today Let's see Greg hops is here welcome Greg so you're going to learn Unreal. <laughs> you're going to Unreal first before Blender. I think that's a good choice, especially if you can get your stuff in. Uh, but the reason I like this one a lot is the time of day setting. I'm going to move this out of the way. The time of day setting is probably what you would expect, uh, but it adjusts the time of day. Uh, so I click here, and then I'm just going to drag this slider. And it does much like you would see um, the moving the directional light around. It does the exact same type of thing. Right. I'll move. I'm going to just delete this piece because uh, I won't delete it because I'm going to want it in a minute. But I'm going to hide it here for a second. There we go. We have like a step. Uh, but it'll get some nice shading with this sort of shitty pergola I made. Um, so you'll see it kind of move over time. Now, what's the best thing about the ultra dynamic sky is as it goes to nighttime. Now, the Unreal 5 already does this, right? They have beautiful skies and sunsets and all that fun stuff, right? Uh, but what it lacks is a nighttime scene. So if I go to nighttime, what you'll see is there's actually stars in the sky with ultra dynamic sky. Uh, so there's actually sky and stars, which is great. So I'm going to zoom up so we can see that. There's a moon, which looks like it's behind here. And as it's going to move past, we're going to see the moon. Ah. Or if it's not moving fast enough, we can actually adjust all of this stuff. So I can come into the moon, for example. And I can adjust the moon position and many other parts of the moon. So right now it's a little hard to see the moon, right? It's a little small. So we probably need to adjust the scale. So let's make the scale of the moon really big. Oh, there it is. Uh, and we can also adjust the angle of the moon. And we can adjust the inclination of the moon, meaning where it is in the sky. And then we can also adjust the if it casts shadows or not, which right now it, it is. So I can turn that off. Or I can turn it on. You'll see that it is actually casting light from this place. And because we're using Unreal 5 and uh, using Lumen as the lighting engine, um, it is cast. This is only one light, meaning I just have the ultra dynamic sky and it's only using this light source of the moon as its uh, reference point of what it's casting. Uh, other things you can do in here is you can do the scale, which I showed you. You can do the orbit offset, which is where it's orbiting, the vertical offset, where, where it is in the sky. If you mess with one of these settings, all you have to do is hit this little uh, return button and that will return it back to where it was or the original setting. So if that scale was too big and I want it to be smaller, this is the actual size of that moon. I'm just going to scale it up again so we can see it. Um, this is the phase. The phase is cool. It's basically the phase of the moon. So if you want it to go back. So if you want it to be a full moon is what it starts at. If you want it to be a, a, a tight crescent moon, all of that. And my favorite thing about all of this is it's affecting everything. The lighting is, is affected by the phase of the moon. This texture that it's using uh, is driving it all. 
Uh, and there's so many other areas here that we can do. I think there's even a, you can change the color of the, so this is the light color of what it's casting. So we'll do like a very bright pink so you can see that. Cancel. And then the dark side has the same thing. You can adjust the intensity of the lighting so that it will basically be nighttime or daytime at night. Uh, you can adjust the rotation of the moon. So all this stuff is individually controllable. I know we talked about the moon for probably too long, but this is really cool stuff. And this is why I'm going to use this as my lighting engine for this piece. Uh, because, and I'm going to keep that moon that scale, uh, the time of day again, as we would move the time of day, I'm going to zoom out pretty quick. Let's speed up our camera. There we go. As we would adjust the time of day, we'll kind of just look at the sky here. It's going to drive all of that for me at the same time. So this is something, I, all I have to key, meaning I'm going to set time constraints on this later to basically do this. I only have to key one value and maybe some other supporting values. If I want the, the moon to rotate over time, I could do that, right? But I only have to set one value to go from effectively uh, what will be a sunrise, right? A dawn. And get some beautiful lighting here to the sun setting to an overhead shot to a eventual new noon uh, nighttime and then you'll actually even be able to see <laughs> a massive right now uh, moon rising and that's all from one thing so uh, that's why I'm playing with this that's what I'm using this for and for those that were asking what's the plugin for this uh, the the clouds and everything are all part of this plugin um, you have options for those as well. If you want volumetric clouds, static clouds, no clouds, dynamic 2D clouds, what you want. I'm choosing volumetric clouds. Um, slow down that camera again. We have all this stuff here and um, really easy to use. And it kind of comes out of the box. All you do is drag it and drop it in your scene. It's incredibly use useful and easy. So I love it. I love it. I'm going to use it probably on many of my pieces until I find something better yeah it's in the marketplace you can find it there uh I don't think you find it here yeah open marketplace in Unreal 5 it's it's up here under content you can open that there uh, I don't know if where it went for me but it's probably somewhere now so so what are we going to do we're going to build a library we spent about 25 minutes talking about what we're doing and catching up on what we're doing and playing around with some of these settings so let's actually start making something today um i want to kind of build a, a an area around the character this is the universal sign for around um so what i'm going to do is probably just grab some of these cubes and i'm also going to grab and start uh, going into the content browser the bridge and I'm going to select some items. Now here's a thing, an issue that I have with the bridge. Uh, it's slow. It's a little slow in Unreal 5. Uh, it's not that it's bad. It's just not as easy to use and it doesn't have some of the other things that I like. So you can also go into your other other version of that and use that as well. I have a couple, couple apps I'm gonna close. I'm gonna close this here. And then now that we're starting to actually do some work, I'm going to start my screen recording um, and begin getting some stuff. So I'm also going to look around at, at things, like what we should actually be using. So environments, let's do um, historic. Makes sense. Either ancient temple. Let's kind of click on all these and see what we get. This is mostly materials. Which isn't bad. I can use like these temple walls as a good starting point. This castle might give me more assets that are going to be better, but I'm not sure I like them. I thought about having some windows. So even something like this could be an interesting window to put at the top. Meaning like if I go into here and look at my reference point, there are a lot of things that I was looking at that have ways to let the light in. Not so much in the citadel, but like if this, imagine the whole top of this was a window, we could do something like that pretty easily. What else could we do? Okay, thank you. I don't know if I want to build these houses. 
you can basically make a house out of all these modular pieces, which is pretty cool. This is probably the closest that I want. Like this is, that's actually perfect, like a modular wooden ceiling. And this does some of, some of that old tile. I kind of like this stuff. Uh, what you can do if you don't want to download them is you just hit the heart button in the bottom right. And that'll add it to your favorites, which is this area right here. I obviously have a lot of favorites, but you can kind of start going through that if you like. Definitely want to try this. I don't think I want the panel. Let's get that. Let's get this. Let's get this. We gotta have some stairs. Some handrail kits. I kinda just want like the top of that though. All right. We're gonna see if we can make this all work together. Putting some statues in is never gonna hurt. Obviously in an ideal world, I would sculpt all those from scratch, but I don't think that's super realistic given the time constraint. But I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of these anyways. These are cool. I'm trying to figure out like what the structure is right now as I'm looking through this. Like I want to have some form of some form of structure. These are probably the best, huh? The ones that are actually made. Let's just search for pillar or column. I could make a column as well, which I'm considering out of using just making it. Column button. Okay. I might end up just making these. I don't think that will be too difficult. But I'm going to have something as a stand-in pillar. And I think the one that I like is like this one. Obviously, I've already hearted some of these before. So go into favorites. You'll see it'll start you know, tagging all these things that I've had. I have some, some assets from previous uh, projects in here. can get a little messy in here. I wish there was a way to have like a folder like beyond what there is here. I guess I could just type column in here. There we go. Let's get you. And you can choose. I'm going to make these nanite objects, which means that they're going to be the highest polygon that I can choose. I'm going to download them. Uh, you can choose here, high to low to nanite. And you can also choose your texture sizes and all that fun stuff. So I'm just going to hit download. And it'll download it, and when it's done, I'll hit Add. It's pretty quick to download this stuff. The only uh, caution that I would give everybody is uh, these assets can be, they can be a lot of megabytes. So if you want to um, basically get a bunch of them, you need to be careful because um, your hard drive will fill up very quickly, like extremely quickly. Uh, let's go back to historical. Let's get a couple of these. Just grab one of those. Down one of those. Let's get some stairs. Never hurts to have stairs. Just download a bunch of stuff at once. That'll also show up in my local folder. So as soon as I'm going through all this, it, uh, oh, this is interesting. 
could do wood. I mean, we're looking at a lot of wood, like these wooden beams. Let's try some of that too. Let's just get like one of these. It's not super beaten up. It'll do. Downward. This was that ceiling I was looking at. This is that corner that I was looking at. Uh, I don't want these to be 3D assets. I want them to be favorites. Let's do surfaces, because there was a couple surfaces I was looking at in here. Okay, what was the one I was looking at? They were like floors, it was wood. There we go. This one this one. Okay. And then we'll just go to local and we'll start adding a couple things to our scene. So we're going to hit this little blue button is export. Not you can't really do anything when you hit this export. So there's a little bit of this process. Uh, I've got a question from the chat. I uh, do you typically have to do the models yourself if you wanted to package a project for release or is that just personal preference when you said ideal world? Uh, it's kind of a bit of both. It's a good, really good question. Um, you know, in an ideal world, I would be making um, these assets for myself. Part of it is just the, you know, the artist in me wanting to do that. Part of it is on a big project, like you're asking, uh, you might not have the ability to use these. Like you might not want to have them licensed, right? Then that could be a big part of that uh, you also might be working in something where these just aren't applicable they just don't really seem like they're you know the right thing to do to use or uh, you just don't want maybe you or the creative director who are the art directors whoever you're, you're working with they don't necessarily want you to or want the world to be made of assets that already exist so I think it ends up being typically just people wanting it to make it themselves because then they know it's kind of crafted from them. See, uh, in my content browser here, things are starting to load in. So this Roman column, I can now grab and drag and drop it. It's a little tiny, but we could grab these and get these in here. That's pretty cool looking. And that comes in with all the materials, and this is a nanite object. So we'll definitely probably use something like this. And even just putting that scale in there all of a sudden makes these this like a nice, a nicely made object next to what I had quickly made as a proxy definitely changes the way that it looks and feels. Uh, which is actually really cool. Like this statue, you know, we could do the same. Just getting some other elements in here is gonna change the way that this feels considerably. Uh, you can go into Quixel Mixer and you can retexture some of these objects, which is a good way to uh, change the material that they're made. So if I don't want them to be this sort of uh, marble, I can do that. Let's get a couple more elements in here. So I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to grab this wooden one. Now the wood and the marble, we might have a weird contrast if that works together. searching wooden marble is that like a common wood on the floor wooden marble history there's a novel called that just to see most of the time you'd see it as like a single object made of one type of material so that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out as we're doing this Some of these are still loading in, so that's why you see these little blocks, meaning it's it's not ready to drag and drop in. If I do drag and drop, this is what it looks like. It actually locks up the whole computer, except for the browser that we're, I'm talking to you on. So 
So this process of using Megascan stuff is really great, uh, but it can, well, there it is. Uh, it can just take a little while to get it, to get stuff in. That's, you know, that and these files can, can be large. They're, they can be really large. So just be aware of that. Table, book, book. I could probably sort these a little better than what I have now, and I, I will, I'm sure. I'm going to get this large wooden column. I'm going to do these stairs and a couple more items before I uh, really get exploring. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take the assets that you see here, and I'm going to basically create a version 2.0, a proxy. This is the post that I'm importing. I'm also going to import this beam. And then I'm going to get these stairs. I have all these big uh, cliffs and stuff that we did from the last one. I probably will use some of these too, just for exterior, but I don't know if I'm actually going to see it. You know, I had made these sort of ziggurats in the background and stuff like that that we could we could play with, but if this is going to be more of an indoor scene, or at least partially more of an indoor scene, I don't know if I'm going to see too far out there. So there's that big wooden post. You can see immediately just the difference in the vibe of those two, meaning like if I just come in here, we'll just do it this way. You can hold down Alt while you're selecting something, and that will clone the object. You have to release Alt as well. So this is obviously going to create a very different experience than if these were all marble, which we'll try in a minute as well. But I want to get this beam. Let's see if the beam came in. It's a book. There's the beam. So we're going to get like a craftsman vibe. Could probably just do it this way. this button oh cancel cancel I think I was somehow selecting the sky in the background when I did that yeah it doesn't like me doing that we'll just select them For those who are new to Unreal or those that are learning Unreal, it's actually uh, most of the buttons are, are kind of the same. The navigation is a, a little bit of a, a challenge at first, uh, just because you basically uh, have to fly around your, like you're in a first person shooter. So you know, hold down right click, scale these out real quick, hold down right click and then uh, move and that's how you look. and then. Q is down, E is up, W is forward. That's the basic starts. So you kind of just fly around. Now this already feels very different. Obviously there's no ceiling, if there's going to be a ceiling. So let's kind of get some of those elements in. This is, again, kind of proxy 2.0. I'm going to hide this because I don't think anybody really needs to see this right now. What kind of computer am I using? Uh, I'm using a Lenovo. Uh, this event is sponsored by Lenovo, so thank you to them for sponsoring. Um, and I'm using a 2080 with 64 gigs of RAM. Let's get this in there. Uh, going back to my favorites, in case you're wondering what I'm doing and why I'm not adding anything to the stream. 
doing anything on stream. I wish there was like a way to filter this for what I added most recently because there's like 400 things in here now. We can also go to our local. There we go. I want this one. I get this one. Again, you can see it's a little slow. Rob is asking, do you use a Wacom to navigate or a mouse in Unreal? I've been using a mouse in Unreal. I've been having a little bit of trouble uh, getting the Wacom to work for me in Unreal. Meaning like a, a, the right click navigation uh, just doesn't seem to, to work as well for me. Now, surfaces are not nanite. It's not a thing you can do. There's virtual texturing, but uh, it's not quite the same. All right, let's get these in here. And I'm basically going to build around this space, I think. You can see it's starting to have some trouble loading in all the textures at one point. I believe I had to like click on something. Oh, my internet's going down, that's why. So I'm obviously having a bit of a streaming issue here. to enable it. I might have to figure that out next time. Because everything is getting very low res except for some of these textures here. Which are looking great. But that's okay. I'm wondering. Book, table, cliff. I don't care about the cliff. Cornerstone. I want this. Yeah, I like that. I think that fits the, the vibe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not sure about these wood things, though. They feel just too old. Like next to this like nice polished wood. So was I adding book, column, statue, statue, book, ceiling. Ooh, this is a couple pieces of ceiling. Okay. So this is one. What do we have here? Oh, oh there we go. This. is casting an interesting shadow because it probably should be casting that shadow. Which basically I think just means that the material needs to be double-sided. So we probably just click on this. Is there a double-sided option? Two-sided. I want the shadows to be accurate for it, but I think this could be cool to basically take several of these. I think this would be a little classier than that pergola look. And if we're down here, get out of here, thing. Pretty dark though. Definitely a little darker than I was expecting. It works though. Not quite what I was wanting though. And wooden 
post. We did that one. The wooden beam. We have that one. Okay. This is where I'm going to start. I can actually start blocking out the scene now. Now that we have about just over an hour left, which is fine. Um, I don't think these posts are working, so that we'll probably end up removing those. But for now, we'll just delete, 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 delete. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to use to make the actual library bookcase. Is there a bookcase? Let's just type the word book. I'm typing into the uh, thing here. Oh, it's because I'm in local. Book. A lot of books. Old book, old book. Those are decals. Book case. A uh, book, a shelf. Nope. What is this music? It's called Arcade Pizza. That's what it sounded like. Cabinet? Yeah, they don't really have anything for like a bookcase, so we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do for that. Do you need to build the light in Unreal 5? Good question. Uh, I haven't been building any of the light, so for me it's it's been pretty good, actually. Uh, so yeah, it's seemingly fine. Uh, I do need to figure out how to get the virtual texturing going on because of the texture sizes uh, are beginning to compete. That's something I'll probably do for next stream, though. Let's see if we even brought in, like, let's say we bring this surface in. Can this even... Oh. Now we're getting to, like, a very different vibe. It's obviously much too large. But I like it. just to simulate the look. I think I can make that work. We can make that work. Rather than this tile. The tile's cool, but it's not really, it's not really working. So we're basically gonna deconstruct this now. All right, uh, what do I need to do? I need to basically build the the walls. I need to figure out what the texture of that wall is going to be. Um, the easiest way to do that would be I could model it in Maya and then bring it in. I could model it in ZBrush and bring it in. I could just start putting things here in Unreal, which is probably the easier way uh, with less precision. Then I'll need to bring in elements in. I think that's probably going to have to be the thing that I do. Um, create, we'll just make a box. Mm. Plane. much closer to the camera than it actually is in size. Let's delete this floor. We don't need that. And let's see how this is going to look on there. Pretty stretched. Let's turn it around so we can see the light. So this is where I'll need to adjust the UVs. And this is kind of why I was wanting to do it in Maya, because I'll have more control there. I haven't played around too, too, too much with the uh, modeling toolkit and all that fun stuff in Unreal as far as being able to adjust UVs and, and adjust the tiling on that yet. So that's something I'm still kind of learning. So I think I will jump into Maya. 
me just open up that scene. But I think I'm going to start here. All right. Delete, delete. Um, go over here. Come over here. Oh, hi. I'm just going to use these as quick temp uh, block outs. This whole thing is standing on doesn't really need to be there. I'm just going to use this space as my kind of number one uh, barometer, I guess, for what needs, what it needs to look like and how big it needs to be. Meaning everything I've done up until now was work to get this started. Colors obviously not working. We'll be fixing that later. These textures aren't working uh, perfectly, at least. That's okay. I'll fix that later. Again, just kind of blocking out the space. for some of these. I don't like uh, how it doesn't automatically have planes, you know, the, the normals being flipped on one side causes an issue with the lighting, meaning like if I was to use a plane here, you'll see that it's casting a, sh or a cube, it's casting a shadow. So I probably should have just done that. Versus this. That way I can move the lighting around and everything will be better. Law office vibes. Yeah, it definitely feels like a, a <laughs> an attorney. Uh, it, this, we'll see if the wood stays. I'm not entirely sold on it, but I like it, but it's definitely giving me those vibes as well. Especially with this black marble floor. Just like, oh, okay. I know you are. I kind of will need to do this 
as well with this object. Just so I'm getting the right. Look, step into my office. Uh, I'm raising the floor. I'm going to squish the floor so that it's very thin. And then I'm going to shrink it down. And we're going to use this as our proxy for uh, the roof for now. Oh, I guess we can't do that, can we? Um, we have to make a couple. You can start to see that, that more of the, the darker environment is kind of what I was looking for. I kind of wanted to see if this even works. The idea of this, if it even works. It is fun to play around with this, though, because you're basically just using Legos. I've heard a lot of people use that reference, that this feels like you're using Lego kits. Uh, in Unreal, and it is very, very true. Just grabbing all this stuff and kind of moving it around. person is their assistant and they are here so let's do a quick lighting test I'm gonna delete this other human goodbye human um, slow down our camera a little bit select our sky and play with our time of day so this is the goal of what I was looking for what it could be what could change A little direct right now. And again, it's only moving in like straight overhead. Oh, that sun, that moon is still huge. Uh, and what I think I need for the nighttime sequences is some lights. I like how this is all kind of starting to do its own thing, though. So let's do another quick test. Let's. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Mm -hmm. Sound effects are essential. How am I how am I doing? Thank you very much for asking. I'm doing very good. Thank you. Just trying to block out this character, this world. Nobody would really use an ancient column next to all this wood, though. So it's kind of a weird contrast. I kind of like this, too. 
you know, open air vibes kind of thing. Especially with this music. much better than people trying to do this in blender and eevee uh yeah i mean that's the eevee is great don't get me wrong the blender is great as well but it's um um it is it's not as powerful as unreal i think that's kind of the difference right um yeah it, it, it's it's great but it's hard can you ask me a question from a tutorial I did on Stan Winston. Oh, I did that a long time ago, so I honestly won't remember what exactly I did there. But you can ask a question, and if it's more general, I can definitely try to address it. So feel free to ask, but I, I can't guarantee I'll, I'll be able to help you. I like these open-air style. The reason I was wanting to not do open-air initially was because I was wanting it to feel more like they were in a dark area... But I think that it, once it gets to like, you know, nighttime scene, meaning like you could see this, the moon, they need, they need light anyways. So I think it's probably more interesting to do like a whole thing where you could see like the sun go down, the sun rising and the sun setting. The moon's coming up. The moon is still absolutely massive. Uh, and I got to get some candles in here. So let's just do like a quick light. Uh, probably a point light. There they are. I'm sure I could also create an emissive material. Which might be better. I think emissive materials have some issues with flickering. Which is something I'll be a little concerned about. Let's just take like, well, I guess we can actually look at what we're doing. Uh, we'll just take you for now. And we have a candlestick. obviously not a candlestick but it works and we'll say it's this intense and bring this over so you can see that I'm gonna go back to our uh, sky I'm going to change the time of day back to nighttime. So you can see, it's pretty dark in here. I think I do want to do an illuminated object, like an uh, emissive object, is what I'm trying to say. The Lumen is sick. Lumen is amazing. I have to admit, Lumen is pretty amazing. Um, there's not a lot else to really say about that, to be honest. It is pretty beautiful. It works super, super quickly. Um, it's a new material. A candle. I'm sure I can find one of these on the marketplace as well, so I'll probably play around with that later. Is there an emissive color? Yep. Uh, I think I need this to go in here. 
I want to turn it as a parameter and call it emissive. And then let's try making a sphere just as a test. Shapes, that's what I want. Sphere. Great. Save. I guess technically I should make an instance of this and drag that on there and click this one and then under the emissive I missed it something's going on So emissive materials in Unreal cast light, which is pretty awesome. So instead of having this light, for example, what I could do is just create some objects or find some objects or model some objects. saving. I should probably save all, to be honest with you. Oh, you have a question about duplicating objects in Unreal, or sorry, in ZBrush. I can show you that real quick in one second. Just kind of put this there. This will be our test. So let's go back to our world outliner, our sky. It's our daytime. This will be our nighttime. So we see the emissive thing, which is good. I'm going to select the material that will pop it in my outliner. I think I wanted this one on it, though. This one. So that when I select this now, Emissive boost. Let's just type a really big number. 100. Hmm. It is functioning. But it's just not doing anything at that size. Let's go to the parent material. I feel like this should have been white or something. What if I turn this to like a hundred? Oh, still not lighting up anything though. Which is interesting to me. I mean, five is cool to have like a little blow, glow to it. I like that. I know that I'm missing something, but I don't know exactly what it is. Saturation. I want your saturation to be 100, but I want your value to be 5. Okay. Value to be 1,000. 10,000. It's weird that it's lighting it. But it's not actually casting any light unless the object itself is bigger. Like, I'm sure if I grab this thing and scale it, it is functioning. Which is what I want. I do want that. But I might need a couple of these, so we're going to have to figure out how to make this work. Meaning, like, I could probably take a couple of these and we'll just pretend that these will eventually be lamps or 
lights or something. These are way too bright right now, way too big, way too many. But you can kind of get the sense, I think, of what I'm thinking. I think if I adjust this one, this is the emissive boost, I believe. Yeah. This isn't doing anything, though. Nope. Nope. What happens if you blow out the light values? Yeah, I tried that. I mean, this was I put it to like 10,000. The boost did nothing. If I go into the layer itself, oh, this is the wrong one. This is the instance, so this is what it's using. If I go to the parent material and I go into this actual color here, I put this one at like 10,000. Doesn't do anything either. It was super bright for a minute. I don't remember exactly what I did, but that's all right. I'll figure that out later. The goal is that when we do our nighttime sequence, basically, these will probably turn off. So I'll have to, I'll have to whatever, animate them turning off or on, or just key them off and on. And so it'll start here go through all of this, light the character, the sun will go over the top, and then we'll end with this. And it'll go into a nighttime sequence where I want to be able to see more. And there's definitely some fills and stuff I could bring in. I could probably adjust the uh, nighttime brightness, which is right here. It's a little too bright, obviously. We could play with that. But I think there's potential for this. I mean, you can see that up close, it's starting. This character also has some weird shading issues, but it's going to work, which may be part of the issue. It's just not receiving light. Like, what if we just duplicate this and push this up here? Like, it is lighting things, which is nice. So, we will put all of these away for now. don't want that piece. Yeah, great. Outliner, group. Cool. Blocked that in, that's good. Get this back to this time, that's good. Uh, I do wish I could slightly shift it, which I will. later in general i think we're getting we're making progress which is good i'm going to save this real quick uh, we'll do that zbrush thing real quick for those who are asking zbrush all right i can use this uh, example here so uh you were asking how i duplicated some teeth uh, these are just several different objects first i like to use the transpose line instead of the um whatever it's called, the gizmo. So there's the gizmo. I'm holding down control and I'm dragging, just like you could drag like this. If I go off, it'll select something else. While I have that selected, I can hold down control now and use the middle mouse, or not the middle, the middle uh, dot, the circle, the white one here. If I hold down control, I can take that object and, and it'll uh, clone it. So holding down control, using the middle transpose line, will duplicate that object around. Uh, you were asking how I did teeth, so I probably did something, uh, I'll mirror this, I probably did something like this, selected them both, and then duplicated them like this. So it's using control. 
Uh, if you were sculpting a character in ZBrush and wanted to check it out in Unreal 5 for lighting, etc., without other elements, do you think Unreal could handle the poly count without unwrapping, projecting, etc.? Uh, yes, I do think it could. You just need to import it as a nanite object. The downside, I would say, of the nanite objects is that it can take a very long time to process them, meaning like it will take several minutes to process them. So for those who are interested in doing character work, um, as I am, uh, that has been the biggest, I think, challenge that I've seen so far, just because it doesn't really seem to like, um, it just doesn't seem to like it. I don't exactly know what it is, um, but it just takes forever. You know, I think, I think we probably have gotten pretty spoiled with the whole um, key shot bridge and just how many things you can render uh, in that. It just for some reason doesn't like, it just doesn't like it. So uh, you could bring in something that's 10 million polygons, you could bring in something that's 50 million polygons, but uh, it's gonna take you a while. Even decimated models, it will, it'll take some time. Uh, you know, Brendan is saying and, and uh, you know, Jared's asking, decimate them. You can definitely decimate it and send it over. That'll help. Um, but don't think it's, I, I guess I would just say, like, don't think it's going to be as fast as the Keyshot Bridge. It's not. It's not. Um, it will come in, and once it's in, it will work without issues. Uh, I'm having some issues here with my mesh, but I had mesh issues last time. So I think that's just something in the way that I'm setting it up. This is a decimated model. Ooh, okay. I have now zoomed out far beyond our world. And you're seen as a sky dome. <laughs> Here, I need to find my window, my outliner. World outliner. There we are. I think I'm in this world, though. There we go. Uh, once it's in, it'll be fast, and it'll work, and it'll be beautiful, but in the meantime, it's not. Now, here's an issue. This is what I was talking about before. Uh, see this? This is a nanite object, and I don't know exactly what this is, but because it is a one-sided scan, it's, it's photogrammetry, these normals are not working. I have tried this before, so I'll select it again. I need to go into my... Uh, I somehow I closed my details panel. Details, details. Select this. I want this to be two-sided. Use two-sided. No. Okay. Let's try the material. Okay, use two-sided, two-sided. Why is it not working there? Two-sided, two-sided. Let's go to the parent material. Browse, find the parent material. Oh, hi, I'm back. Welcome. Uh, apparently Unreal did not like me trying to play with its two-sided materials. It still isn't working. You can see I turned on two-sided and now it just broke the material. I don't know how these are supposed to work, but this is a problem I've been encountering. 
Or this should all be dark in here. It shouldn't be allowing the light to go through that. If anybody knows how to fix this, let me know in chat. I'd love to hear. I don't understand it. I don't. I genuinely don't. I just know that it seems to break it if I don't do it. And even in the master material. Two-sided. Turn it back off. Because it seems to not like anything I'm doing. We'll come back to that later. I could put a cube or something stupid out there to make it not do that. But that's not really what I want to do. You know, like I could just duplicate this thing and like spin it around. And put it like here and then scale it up like I, there's ways to make it work so that I'm not doing what I'm having to do right now obviously but that's not really the point this is a plane so I'm just finding some weird things with uh, with unreal in regards to like it using a plane it doesn't seem to respect the two-sided lighting this would be a lot darker in here. Which is good though. That's what I want. I want that. So, let me move this off stream. Alright. I like the columns. I do like the columns. And the wood is kind of working, but I'm not sure it's really working, to be honest. I like the darkness of it. I like the tones of it. But I'm not sure. Like, I kind of liked the original materials that I was playing with more. Like, just bringing this back in. Adds, like, a nice bounce to it. Or this tile. It's like a nice reflection to it. Or this has a bunch of nice... Whereas the floor that I was using isn't really as good. Some of it is for sure the, you know, the size and the scale of it and all that. This is just feeling better to me. Alright. I think maybe going more marble with some wood accents versus all wood will be better. Question, why, why everyone is moving to Unreal? Even Alex Alvarez is showing workflow in Unreal, which is really great. Uh, the reason is, frankly, because it's fun. It's really fun. <laughs> and I think that that can't really be uh, denied, how fun something is, how easy it is to use something. Um, you know, I think that this is... To be able to, to block out something, even though this doesn't look great, I can tell you that I'm liking this more than I was. Um, I'm probably going to go to an older style of this stuff using the columns um, and just generally older, probably some older materials in here but it's just really fun that's kind of all, all you can say uh, so we could also come in here and start playing out with what, with what would be around I think now that I've got an idea of it being more open air you know, I'll probably take this character maybe put them in the middle or I guess I could do this. I had talked before about them being against the wall. What if I put them against like this type of a wall on the side? And then it's like, let's play around with that. Let's see what that looks like.
let me get a cinema camera actor. Where am I? There we are. Start playing around with framing. Um, floor that's why that is again the back side of a scan not stopping the light from coming through so playing with this I think that this is probably going to be more successful, actually. Yeah, I think I like this more. So we kind of get the reverse of that. We're just going to go through all this. This is having that same reflection issue. Same thing. Meaning it's probably because this is, or I know what it is. It's This is a plane. And these are not see-through. And they are see-through. Where am I? There we are. So you can see this is why it's casting through the back of that. I'm going to have to figure that out off stream. For now, I'll just do this. And this is where I'll probably start playing around with my compositions. Now that I'm feeling pretty comfortable with the orientation, at least, and how this will all happen. And at nighttime. I've made the moon really, really large, so we'll see it, obviously coming through but I think this will work I'm feeling pretty good about how this is going to work because um, now that orientation makes sense it's not just blasting in the face and pure silhouette I can take shots from the sides uh, meaning like a silhouetted side and a lit side I think that'll be way better. I think this will be way better. And then we can do all this stuff. And let's go back to like a noon. And then what I could do, and I, I've experimented, or, or I think I will do this, but let's get like a, let's get like a nice kind of purpley sunrise here. And then we'll play around with this. I'm going to hit save real quick because I'm actually feeling like we've made some great progress right now. Um, get that weather going and see what this does so I'm gonna change the preset to clear skies somewhat boring partially cloudy is what we're looking at cloudy I think I foggy's gonna be too much light rain snowing in here. 
It is. It's going. It's going just through the, the skylight. Uh, snow. Let's go. Uh, rain. And then I want to adjust the the weather intensity is fine. So you can actually see what I'm seeing, can you? Uh, right here. So I'm going to adjust the. Which I think would be this. Oh, I think that was all. That was a thunderstorm back there. See that? Let's get a thunderstorm in here. Uh, cloud coverage. So you can see this is the ability to how many clouds you actually want. It seems like I need those clouds to make this really function, though. reason that is breaking it. But I want to be able to see things in the distance and right now that's kind of shutting this down. But that's cool. I see like all this stuff. sky. Let's try just dialing down the fog with what we have now. Oh, that was in the weather. This is the sky. Nope. Uh, nope. Height fog. Yeah, there we go. Turn this down uh, to zero, probably. Or oh, this can go down to like 0.1. Uh, let's make it zero. Okay. Undo. Uh, zero. Negative. Hmm. I have to get in here and play with all these settings. But I think this will work. I'm going to play real quick. This is always fun. I don't think anybody can hear these, but there's actually like thunder cracks when this happens, which is so cool. Anyways, I think this will work. Uh, I just need to figure out how I'm going to tone back some of the settings because what I want is to have the weather potentially. Uh, when, when I do this cycle or even in just some of the shots that I do, I don't want the to miss some of the stuff that I'm going to put in the background, meaning I'm going to put some other things in the background here. But for some reason, the... Um, any setting basically over partially cloudy or clear skies is obliterating my, my horizon line. So I'm going to have to get in here and figure out why this is happening. Because it shouldn't be. It should not be doing that. At least I don't want it to do that. All right. So I like this. I might push the whole character out a little bit, meaning let's go here, sky, details, I like afternoon. Let's just pretend that this is, I can go to my normal perspective.
give it a little room just so that the character's kind of sitting in a space rather than right up against the wall. Which would probably be easier to just move them, huh? I think this is going to work. I think it's going to be all right. I just need to now figure out the design for everything. But at least we figured out a couple cool things. Which I feel good about that. I'm going to hide some options here. I'm going to play around with some of these settings. Volumetric cloud settings. Oh, I accidentally opened the blueprint. This is the blueprint of the sky so you can see all what it's doing if you know about blueprints or are capable in blue in blueprints i think we'll do that playing around with some settings here This is the fog when it's clear. Basically, I can I can make it nothing so that nothing happens. The default is very low, but even then, you can see like I might want to add like another zero in here, but it doesn't really let you. Well, I guess it does. So there's a little bit of something. This is nothing. So I'm at point zero 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 one as compared to zero you can see a slight difference there and this is default uh, with that i can also adjust the density so i want it to go down oh, it's taking a second we'll go up first this seems to not be functioning though oh there it is you can see it coming in If you want it to be super foggy i'm gonna have to play around with all this stuff I'm probably gonna have to get a couple different settings depending on the time of day that i want the type of weather that i want and probably key these or find a way to get them so that they're working uh more accurately basically Yeah, I think this is going to be great. I'm excited for this one. Uh, that does mean I need to basically build all this. We have about 15 minutes left in the stream. So let's just get some rocks and stuff in here uh, and start doing that. So I'm going to go to the content browser. Collections. Local. I'm just going to grab stuff I already have. Let's grab something we took from... Oh, this will be good. We'll get a cliff, a couple cliffs. I know you can't see them right now, that's okay. It's taking a second. Then we get this other really big one. <laughs> Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Uh, I am doing things, it's just taking a second. And uh, you can kind of see what I'm clicking. I'm going to get a couple of these big cliffs here. Maybe even like this one. I'm exporting them. I've already downloaded them, so it just has to go through the process of clearing out the files and basically like getting the, pro the, the file set up to go. So we'll get a couple of these. And I did this a little bit on the last one, so I might try this real quick and just see how ridiculous it looks. I'm trying like putting it on top of a thing. This is a, you know, an avian character. It's a bird, basically, with wings. So the chance that it could fly to the tops of these other things is, is very high. As far as it, how it would get around. I've also already used these, so I might end up swatching them, swapping them for a different 
type of location, but um, yeah. All right. So now they're going to be in my 3D assets. Some of them are still going to be downloading or uploading. That's the cliff. This is another cliff. Another big cliff. Um, column, column, statue, statue, sharp, sharp. Okay, stain, stain. Would be. Let's do. I thought I grabbed one that was more like a little different than that. But let's see. Something that had like a flatter top. That one's the one I want to put at the bottom. I feel like I'm missing one. I feel like I'm missing one. I basically need something to put everything on top of. So. This one, the outcrop. Did I get the outcrop? Maybe that is this. Let's try. Go away. This will be nice so that when, you know, okay, moving really fast now. Uh, when it's setting, it's basically this could be background objects, right? And things can be built into this, but it'll give it a nice break up from the silhouettes. And also if I just decide to do any further shots like this, it'll kind of give me like a nice more natural vibe. So that's kind of what I'm looking to do right now. I'm gonna hide this outliner because nobody needs to see that. Uh, to get something in here. This will probably be shrunk or you know, put in a way that's a little bit more natural. Uh, but for now, we'll get this stuff kind of lined up. I did like where it was kind of placed though. So some more cliffs. Almost like this could be built into this location. It can't be here though. And then I'll probably take these because I still like the idea of there being a couple other of these. Once I get one down, I'll probably take it and uh, kind of populate it around a little bit more. Let's even just like shrink this so that this is going to be more the size of what the like the foundation of this place should be. Are we looking over here? Yeah. Flickering, I think, is just from two things sitting on top of each other. I think this will be a nice addition. A 
I'll probably move and scale and chop these around so they feel a little better, but. I was like doozing these ones. This one is really fun. It's a cool shape. I used this a lot in the last one. So just to start blocking out what those things could be. In the background of a lot of the shots, you're not really going to totally see these things. But they're cool shapes to go there. And then I guess for the sides, let's go very fast. Only got about 10 minutes left. So we'll just see what this looks like. Again, the chance that I'm going to do an exterior shot of this is pretty low. That was not really the plan. So even though these are mix and matching materials, I don't think I'm going to do that. I might put them in the background, but there's more leeway that way. Even this, though, I don't know. Just the idea that this is kind of how it would work. I like that idea. What if I take this material? And I put it on here. Yeah, all of a sudden that blends in a lot better. It's not going to look as good. If I get close, you're going to see there's sections that have literally no detail on it. Uh, that is because these are UV'd, so they're not procedural. Uh, so I'll need to be careful in sections of when I do that. It would be better to actually just retexture them in Mixer with those materials. I think we're at a good starting spot. All right, let's get rid of this guy. These books can go away. My fake candlestick can go away. I think that ceiling is working pretty well. It needs to be fixed and double-sided and all that, but I think in general it's starting to work. I like the placement of the character. I think that the tile needs to be dialed in. Well, what's actually going to be here needs to be dialed in. Try a different floor, a couple floors. I like the other one more. I did like this one. It's kind of lines. I think I like the other one more, though. So we'll probably use some form of texture like this. Go ahead and get in just a couple things just at the end again to kind of like add some history to this place. So again, if we were doing like I'll do a quick uh, thing here in a minute. Or we'll switch our lens. Perspective. This is our other lens. Uh, this lens will give us different elements here, but what we can do with this is just kind of play around with it. Uh, let's push this down. And then let's go back to our camera. Let's turn on our camera, our time of day.
So in some of like the, the Dawn shots. Not sure about this column. But there's something going on there, isn't there? Oh, it's because I moved where the character was before. I think this would need to be like here. And then let's go to, uh, let's select our, our camera. So I have it selected. And right now it's using 16 by nine digital film. I can play around with all this different stuff. What type of film it's using. You can make a custom one as well. You can adjust your lens settings, your focal settings. Uh, I have been using digital film. I think. Let's see, one second. I had some settings that I'm going to look for real quick. All right, so we're going to make a custom. I found it. Custom. We're going to do. Width, there is a film back. Width, uh, this would be a 36. And then the height would be 1506. I found these on ArtStation. But this is basically like for like a super wide uh, look. And then like the lens, I guess, that I would technically be using for this. Uh, then we're going to make a custom one, and it would be, I want to just use like a 50 prime, 85 prime. I'm going through some elements here, which is part of it, the challenge of using a much longer lens. We'll use a 30 prime. I like 50 more though. This will make it so that certain elements can be nice and blurry. I think we'll get some good stuff out of this. I'm feeling pretty good. A lot to do still, but I like how the camera's looking. I like this kind of setup. I like a couple of these angles. Let's go from the other side. I've lost myself. There we are. I think there'll be some nice angles of this, so it'll be pretty. And I'll, I'll figure out what's going to be in the background and all that. Yeah, exactly. Tons of candles everywhere. Scrolls, books, shelves. Like, i got to fill this space with stuff. But I think I feel generally better about like how the layout of the space is working like everything that this is how this is looking and then how everything inside is going to work i feel pretty good about that so yeah uh yeah but we're pretty close to the end of the stream now so i'm actually going to start wrapping up um i'm just going to go back to this time of day so we can actually see things cool yeah this will work this will work well i'm gonna save uh thank you everybody for joining the stream today appreciate you all being here uh thank you for asking questions that always helps <laughs> always helps uh but yeah thank you so much for the stream next stream um we have two more probably two more streams on this character so uh i'm gonna have to eventually make some feathers for this character and i'm gonna act, uh, have to texture the character and i'm going to have to kind of finish the environment that we started today um so that's a lot to do in two weeks, but we'll get it done and uh, it'll be fun. So tune in next week, uh, same time, same channel and uh, looking forward to it. All right, everybody. Well, thank you all very much. I'm going to hit our outro video and I will see you all uh, next week.